Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. About almost exactly a year ago, on October 19, 2021, after watching um, one of the videos uh, when uh, Kristen Dirksen um, went and visited Aptera, there's this shot of Chris Anthony holding the back of the solar cells. And at that point, I was pretty sure based on this picture and, and other things that they were going to use Maxion solar cells. But they that, that had never been confirmed by them. And just this week, uh, this past week, they put out this press release and they are confirming that they're using Maxion Gen 3 um, solar cells. So Aptera selected Maxion solar cells because they are highly efficient, durable, and lightweight. With minimal energy loss, the Maxion Gel Gen 3 solar cells are crucial to Aptera's solar mobility movement powered by these unique high efficiency cells. Most drivers will likely never need to charge their Aptera. Um, so Maxion uh, solar cells, for those of you that don't know, actually are a subsidiary or used to be a subsidiary of SunPower. SunPower spun off Maxion back in 2019 and um, now they are their own company. SunPower is focusing more on battery and installation, some other things. Um, but the solar cell manufacturing and development has been sent off as Maxion. And these Maxion cells have many um, attributes that make them really good for the purposes of putting them on uh, a vehicle like the Aptera. And for that reason, many other vehicles that are similar to that here have used the same exact same uh, Maxion Gen 3 cells. Um, the Lightyear 1, which we're all familiar with, uses Maxion Gen 3 cells. And the uh, lots of these solar racers in the World Solar Race, that's which is done in Australia, I think every year or so, they use the Maxion cells. And uh, there's this cool um, plane called the uh, Solar Stratos which uses the Maxion uh, solar cells. So what makes these things better for uh, these mobile applications? Well, a couple of things. They are, they're more efficient. So the SunPower uh, cells have about an efficiency of 20, little over 22 to 24%, which is higher than the Gen 2, which were like 21 to 22%. And they're comparing it to um, other conventional P-type silicon and thin film which are significantly less. So they're very efficient uh, um, as solar cells go, and um, they deliver the highest energy per watt. So they uh, don't lose power. And then durability advantage, this is probably the thing that's most important for these mobile applications. When you put it on a plane or a car, there's a lot of vibration that, um, that they have to withstand, and plus impacts from uh, weather conditions that uh, that you definitely won't get as much um, in other applications. So just the, the, the vibration, the stress, um, and then the impact. So they are very flexible. Um, and there is a video on their website talking about that. And you will see the flexibility advantage of these things. Um, because of the way that they're built. Uh, so here is a traditional cell and there's the sun power maxion cell and you see this pattern here is exactly similar to the one and you see how much you can bend this thing before it shatters now you see the amount of bend that they put on these things in the video uh, is pretty extreme and if you go back and so there's several other things showing this okay we're gonna pop out of this um, if you if you compare how much they're bending it to how much bend there is on the Aptera, it is significantly less. The bend that they're putting on the Aptera, this two axis bend, is not very extreme. It's like a few degrees at most. It's a very subtle bend. So the amount of bend that the solar cells can withstand is far more than they're being asked to do on the Aptera. The other thing is um, their spectral response. So this is um, a spectral response and they show um, this is the amount of solar spectrum. And um, you see the the red line is a conventional solar cell and sun power. So as you can see, sun power has a little more of, of energy generation um, in the UV range. UV range is 400 nanometers and below. 400 nanometers about to about 10 nanometers is UV. Uh, and then there's some... Um, infrared up here 
which it doesn't pick up. Neither one picks up. So there's a little, a, a significantly more on the UV side and a little bit more on the infrared side, but there's more spectral response. So I wanted to double check if this was correct. So I, I looked up um, the spectral response here. And what you see is this is the amount of uh, radiation you get um, outside of the atmosphere. And then the atmosphere absorbs quite a bit of this. And so you get like drop offs because like nitrogen and oxygen and CO2 in the air and, and water vapor in the air like will absorb these uh, these peaks. So by the time you get to uh, sea level, this is the spec. This is the amount of solar radiation that you get, which is very much in line with what they're showing you here. So you see that there is a lot of infrared out here, so out, out past 700. Uh, so up past about here is infrared and uh, the solar cells will capture some of the infrared but they stop their um, spectral response on this picture after 1200 uh, nanometers but you see after 1200 nanometers there's a, a still a lot more infrared um, radiation here but it's not very much uh, in terms of how many watts uh, per meter squared you're getting out here but anyways the bottom line is um, the Maxion cells do have more spectral response. More spectral response is always good. If they could develop a cell that captures more infrared, that'd be good too. But there's not that much um, energy as you get out into the infrared, it kind of tails off. And so probably not worth uh, capturing. Most of the radiation happens right here. This is the peak um, at the violet range, violet and blue range of the, of the whole spectrum. Also, you can see the dimensions of the thing. It's 12.5 by 12.5 centimeters. And you see the tabs here. And they will they sell these um, interconnect tabs um, along with it. And you saw in the video that Aptera put out that they are indeed using these tabs um, in their uh, little robotics assembly line where they're putting it together. All right. So I hope that gives you a little more information about the Maxion Gen 3 cells. I will link this PDF from uh, Maxion detailing the details of their uh, solar cell in the description in case you guys want to check it out on your own. But um, there's good reason why this is the dominant uh, cell that's being used in these um, mobile inter um, applications like the Lightyear, Solar Stratos, and uh, Sunrace teams. And it's because it's just it's more efficient and it's durable. And those are the those are the kind of two those are probably the two most important things. You want durability and you want efficiency. And um and it's well known, it's a it's a big brand, so it's a very, probably a very good choice that Aptera has decided to go with this. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Um any questions or comments, um please put them be below. Thanks as always to our supporting members. Um and have a great day, everyone.